Screen Directors Playhouse, stars Douglas Fairbanks, Joyce McKenzie, production Prince of Foxes, director Henry King. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. <laughs> Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present the story of a stirring history. Here now, for the first time on the air, is our adaptation of Prince of Foxes, starring Douglas Fairbanks as Orsini, with Joyce McKenzie as Camilla. Italy, 1500. Not a single state, but many states crammed into the Mediterranean boot. Italy, 1500, thrust howling into a state of perpetual warfare. And over the bloodiest of battles floats the banner of the bull, the ensign of Cesar Borgia. Cesar Borgia, whose mailed fists reach out from the court of Rome and crush what lies before them. Gentlemen, I presume you read maps. My Lord Borgia jests. As captain in your lordship's service, I have demonstrated many times... Yes, yes, my dear Don Esteban, it was a rhetorical question. You see, your friend Orsini smiles. I smile only in delight at viewing a map of Italy. A soldier finds it fascinating. <laughs> good, good. Now tell me, Don Esteban, which is of greater service to me, your sword or the Lord Orsini's words? Your lordship knows that in battle the sword cuts the mouth. My lord, Don Esteban must take care that his sword is sharp enough for such cutting. Enough, enough. Look, my dagger. And the dagger in the map. What do you see, Don Esteban? The dagger thrust through our city of Rome. And you, Orsini? Would your lordship mind if I spoke not as a soldier, but as a poor painter of portraits? Speak. I see a knife in the hands of Rome. And throughout the waste of Italy, I see a map of many colors. As an artist, my lord Borgia, I would find much more beauty if there were only a single color. And that, the symbol of Borgia's rule. Your dagger, my lord. You'll sense its sharpness well. Now, look here. The road to conquest, the Flaminian road. In the spring, my troops will take this path to secure the Italian marches. We take Camerino, and on and on. But here, here is the obstacle. Cheetah del Monte. An eagle's nest perched atop a mountain, straddling the Flaminian road. Well, Don Esteban, what do we do about it? Give me 10,000 troops. Or one man. One man to take a walled city? And who shall he be? Who but a man as quick at deceit as a fox? A veritable prince of foxes. He must charm as a snake charms a bird, yet he must make no friends except those who can be put to use. And for the same reason, although he makes use of love, he must not love. Such a man must take Cheetah Del Monte for me. And who is he? Now you may go, Don Esteban. Or see any remain. I commend your choice, my lord. But your excellence, consider that... You question me. No, oh, sire. Then go. My lord, Orsini. <laughs> Your captain is annoyed, sir. Do not laugh yet, Orsini. Should you lose a single step forward, Don Esteban is close behind. But enough of this. The key to Cheetah Del Monte shall be presented to you in due time. Use it well. And the city is ours. And what would this key be, Lord Borgia? A woman, perhaps? Perhaps. Or a knife? They're the same. And if a life must be taken to secure the city... So long as it isn't mine. <laughs> and if it were, I'd merely take back what I've given you. My Lord Orsini doesn't forget that he entered Rome as a peasant. As an artist, my Lord. A peasant artist, then. And now you bear title. Earned in your service. And Lord or peasant, my greatest pleasure is to earn further rewards. In your service, of course. <laughs> Oh, 
laughter. What? Are my words of love rewarded with laughter? Your words spring too easily, Lord Orsini. And why should they not? Fair Angela, since your father deals in rare works of art, you are a fitting daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, my dove. One kiss. Just one, then. I'd... Oh. And when your father arrives, my love, you'll admire my painting and oh. send my price. Orsini. Andrea Orsini, you're a thief. A scoundrel who preys on poor dealers of art. Uh, please leave my daughter alone. Well, what have you brought me this time? A gem, Master Pavia. A true miracle of paint and canvas. Hmm. A bargain beyond counting. At a hundred ducats. Father, you must buy it. Oh, be quiet, Adam. I'll risk fifty ducats. Farewell, my friend. Sixty, then. No more. My lowest price is a hundred ducats. For so rare a painting, oh, Father. Oh, I'm a poor man. I, I... Master Pavia, do I hear you bargain like a fishwife? Madame mia, what an honor you grace my humble shop. An honor indeed, but I regret your presence, madam, whatever be your name. Indeed. How can one praise beauty in a painting when you stand beside it? <laughs> you make a swift acquaintance, my lord. Much too swift to my liking. Angela, daughter. Oh, forgive her, madame mia. You... A touch of indigestion, perhaps. My lord, I find this painting quite pleasing. Would you sell it to me? If your highness would honor me, accept it as your just tribute. Oh, you have greatness of soul, sir. I will hang it in a place of honor, in my own bedroom. A most fitting place. Where it will always recall your generosity to my me. My greatest pleasure. And to my good husband. The devil take him. You spoke, my lord? I uh, merely commented on the good fortune of your husband. Oh, thank you. Master Pavia, isn't it about time you presented this gentleman? Hmm? Oh, um, um, il magnifico Andrea Orsini, captain of his lordship Cesar Borgia. I have the honor to present Camilla Baglioni, wife to His Excellence Mark Antonio Verano. My Lady Camilla, I leave you now with my painting and my regret. That I have your painting? That you have a husband. Orsini! What? Oh, it's you, Angela. <laughs> my beauty, my life. Your window frames your loveliness as no artist could. You're I believe you're right. <laughs> Orsini, behind you! Hi, Orsini. No. Assassin, is it? Now. Please. Now, Master Murderer. I have the knife. Go to your devil. No, don't be a fool. A fool to kill you? You never know why I attacked you. Then talk. If, if, if your Magnifico will release me. Speak up, or by heaven, I... I, I was paid to slay you. By whom? Don Esteban Ramirez. Don Est? Oh, oh, oh. Of course. Orsini, are you hurt? Not a bit. But run, my love. Hide, my lovely. He says he was sent to murder you. <laughs> now, my fine murderer, let me look at you. A fit face for an assassin. A face I can't change. Nor would I want it changed. Beautiful. A face worth the painting. A model of Judas. I'm a poor man of business. Your name? Mario Belli. Well, Belli, you're a poor specimen, but I'll be dashed if there isn't a fine joke in you. Ah, there's jokes enough for the one who holds the knife. You know, it might amuse me to become the master of a man who hi hired to kill me. Ah? What's the game? That you accept my employment. Ah, that depends. For how much? Listen to the rogue. Oh, speak your mind. Shall it be me or my dagger? Mm, I'll bear your service, then. And warn you when I'm quitting. On the honor of a scoundrel. On my honor. Good enough. Tomorrow we pay a visit to the court and to my lord Don Esteban. You bring me news, Billy? Uh, yes, Don Esteban. Then what is it? Uh, it's rather a long story. Answer me. Did you accomplish your mission? Mm. Uh, outside the door, my lord, I have the honor to present Il Magnifico Andrea Orsini. Uh, you find it a pleasant day, Don Esteban? Traitor. What could I do? Let me say at the beginning, Don Esteban, that we must be objective in these matters. You hate me and you seek to have me killed. You dare speak such words here? In the palace of my lord Cesar Borgia? <laughs> but you see, I enjoy his favor. And I promise you, Don Esteban, gross dog that you are, I loathe you quite as happily as you loathe me. There's this difference between us. When I wish to take your life, I won't deny myself the personal pleasure of the act. 
Ah, here you are, Orsini. My Lord Borgia. My Lord. May I present to you my friend and servant, Mario Bailey. I kneel to your Lordship. Ah. Gaze upon his countenance, sire. Did you ever see such treachery? An assassin by trade sold to the highest bidder. And does he really differ from any other person in this room? Oh. Orsini, come to the window. Dr. Esteban, you may go. Ah. A party in your garden. For what occasion? Honored guests on a pilgrimage for the holy year. Oh. You see the old man there talking by the oak tree? With the white hair? Uh, yes, yes. The lord of Chita del Monte. Ah, the mountain city. The city you shall take for me. And with it, if you wish, something for yourself. The key to the city and a jewel with the having. And what is this jeweled key? There. She has just come around the tree. I'll be blasted. Look well, Orsini. So young, so beautiful. <laughs> the old man's wife. Camilla Baglioni. Wife to His Excellency Marc Antonio Verano. Uh, you've informed yourself, my lord. You know what I want. Cheetah Del Monte by spring. Now, shall we join our guests in the garden? <laughs> My Lord Verano, I'm sure Andrea Orsini will prove an entertaining guide during your stay in Rome. My wife and I offer our thanks. From what I know of the noble Orsini, he should be entertaining under any circumstances. So long as they include yourself, my lady. Have you met before, then? <laughs> well, Orsini, have you met before? An unfair question. I could play the gallant and answer yes a thousand times each time I look on beauty. Or I could be cautious and sly and only say, Madonna's memory will guide my answer. <laughs> <laughs> there you have the perfect example of diplomacy. And I still don't know whether they've ever met. <laughs> Does it really matter, my lord husband? Of course not, my dear. My lord Verano, it occurs to me that now would be an excellent time to secure the friendships of our states. But what changing of the subject is this? Not a change at all. For since Andrea Orsini finds favor in your eyes, I suggest we exchange ambassadors. I shall appoint mine now. Orsini. I see. You are a soldier, Orsini, and my people live in peace. I hope you find sufficient amusement in Chita del Monte. I'm sure I shall. We shall welcome you as a friend. We pray that our friendship lasts. And so the bond between our states is fixed. <laughs> drama continues in just a moment. But now, here's a word from RCA Victor. It's a common experience with all of us to spend a heap of money on pleasure and be completely unable a month later to remember where it went. Well, that's an experience you won't have when you buy an RCA Victor television radio phonograph combination. Three great instruments in one beautiful cabinet for one beautiful price, far less than you'd pay for comparable instruments separately. Yes, when you buy an RCA Victor combination, your money stretches. And it talks through AM and FM radio. And it sings through two automatic record changes to play all record speeds. And it looks through the matchless pictures of RCA Victor million-proof television, proven in over a million American homes. And it lasts, entertaining you hour after hour, day after day, year after year. Don't let your pleasure money dribble away. See your RCA Victor dealer and spend where it stretches, talks, sings, looks, and lasts on an RCA Victor combination. Now for the second act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Prince of Foxes. Starring Douglas Fairbanks as Orsini, with Joyce McKenzie as Camilla. Chita del Monte, the walled city, 
raised on its mountain above the conflict of Italy, the path to Cesar Borgia's conquest. Well, my Lord Verano sets an excellent banquet table. No way, no sini. To stop the winter cold, please. Is it Billy? Oh, yes. Yes. And you, my dear? No, thank you. My Lady Camilla has no need of wine to warm her blood. I find it well to keep a clear head when I speak to Cesar Borgia's ambassador. In case... In case, my lady? In case he think me stupid. Your Highness pays little credit to my sense of observation. Captain Orsini, it pleases now to introduce you officially to Chita del Monte. Sires, lords and counselors, I give you the ambassador of the illustrious Cesar Borgia, the Lord Captain Orsini. My Lord Verano, I am a professional soldier. If you should see me climbing your walls, know that I am studying your defenses. Oh, not just exercising? But uh, know also that I was not sent here for that. My master has told me that your main strength in Cheetah del Monte is loyalty. I'm here to spy on this loyalty and to learn the secret of how it works. I am already learning. Please help me to learn more. Thank you. My lady Camilla frowned. Is it that my speech has displeased her? We must talk alone. I'll send for you tonight. My lady honors me. It is scarcely honor, my lord Orsini. Orsini. Oh, and does my lady Camilla wait in the shadows? I said we would meet alone. Then at least stand by the window where we'll find the grace of moonlight. There's the crest of midnight in your eyes, Madonna. And in your hair and on your lips the light of stars. Do you really think I ask you here to listen to such talk? A young wife, an old husband. And a false cheat. My lady forgets herself. I forget nothing. Nothing I saw in Rome. Borgia's soldiers. Borgia's armories. Borgia's talk of war. Leave the game of politics to your husband, Madonna. He's good for little else. Obviously, you came here expecting kisses. I make you a promise, Lord Orsini. Betray us, and you shall feel the kiss of this upon your lips. <laughs> a dagger glitters in the moonlight, and fierce words flash from an angry beauty. <laughs> now, there's a picture worth the painting. There's no laughter in me, Orsini. For my husband's sake, there will be peace between us. So long as you act peaceably. Someone's coming. I've spoken my words. Mark them well, Orsini. Is someone there? Uh, Andrea Orsini, my lord Verano. Wandering about the castle at midnight? And what's this? A dagger? It would appear to be a dagger, my lord. Orsini. You find my wife attractive, don't you? Only with the deepest respect. Words. I regret your lordship thinks ill of me. I think ill of no one. Your lordship is tolerant. I am not tolerant of anything that would affect my wife's honor. And is that in question? Fortunately, no. Mind you, she's as capable of going to the devil as any other young woman. But I'm certain of this. If she does go, she won't sneak about it. She'll tell me first. Your lordship's confidence is most worthy of consideration. Then consider, my lord. And, uh... Incidentally, I'll return this dagger to her. Good night. These walls, Bailey. Mark the thickness of these walls. Mm -hmm. But look at these cannon. Almost rusted through, and these snows will finish the job. Look, we stand thousands of feet in the air, a sheer drop. And they don't have a guard, not one single guard. What matter, guards or cannon here, they can be supplied. Look now, the city sits on the rim of a mountain. In only one place can they be attacked. Borgia's troops would take it like a shepherd herd's sheep. No, Billy, give me a thousand men and enough food and ammunition, and I could hold this place till the enemy died of old age. Ah, it's all very well, my lord Orsini. But our job is to attack it, not defend it. The winter air. Sit down, Bailey. 
Once, Bailey, there was a young man who lived in the country. A peasant's hut. He wanted riches and power and all the fullness of the earth. And he set about getting them with a handful of paints. But other doors opened. And others. And... Ah, it's a good place, this Chita del Monte. I'm pleased you find it so. My Lord Verano. You've come to my favorite spot, where one can almost see the entire world. Whenever I'm troubled, I come here, and I always find an answer to my problem. It frightens me, a misplaced step, and you're gone. Are you afraid of death, Orsini? I have no great affection for it, sir. You still must learn the greatest truth of living. That, after all, nothing dies. The seasons repeat themselves. The trees and grass grow again. Even our own humble places are taken. I don't have your wisdom, my lord. I believe that I was born and that I must die, and between the two extremes lies a devil of a lot of living. I make the best of it. You're cursed with youth, Orsini, and despite the stories that are told, youth is not the happiest part of life. I'm sorry for you and for my wife. You both have a long road to travel. Good morning, my friend. The Lord Arsini. Hmm? What is it, Bailey? Perfect. Heaven sent. What are you talking about? When the time comes, we give the old man a problem. He comes out here to think it out. A push. It's over. Ah, always the man of business. Come along. I'll finish that portrait I'm painting of you. Come along. I'm, I'm getting cold. Now, hold that position. We're almost through. All right. Don't don't push at me. And does my lady Camilla have an interest in art that she watches so closely? I find it odd. A soldier who dabbles at painting. Belly, your head a bit to the left. Perhaps, Madonna, it's an artist who dabbles in soldiering. Perhaps when you finish this, if, if you have nothing else to do, you'll paint... Stand still, Belly. Uh, perhaps Madonna herself. Perhaps. If you promised to wave no more daggers in my face. I promised you peace. If you gave peace in return. We'll start in the morning, but I warn you, it's a long job. We won't finish until spring. Is Madonna weary? No. I'm fine. A few more brush strokes and it will be finished. And you'll show it to me then? Mm -hmm. The months of painting. Yes, I'll show it to you. I daub here, there, and I tell myself I'm creating beauty. Months, my lady, and you've been very patient. For me, they've been extremely happy months. And now they're finished. Uh, and so is the painting. May... May I see? Look. Orsini. Does it please you? Oh, I thought you were only a maker of compliments, a lord of ambitions and dark schemes. But now, in my own portrait, oh, there's a great artist in you. I might have been once. It's past now. You speak with humility. Why? Because I find I'm a stupid man. Everything I know is stale. What's troubling you, Orsini? I don't know. I only know that spring is here. And what was planted in the winter must soon begin to grow. You'll pardon me, Madonna. Orsini! God help me. What am I doing to these people? Magnifico, my lord Orsini. What is it, Bailey? News! News! Spring is here. We have a visitor in Chita del Monte. And what visitor is that? The blade of Cesar Borgia, my former employer... And Esteban Ramirez. I have read your master's message, Don Esteban. I recommend that you consider it well. What does he demand? It appears that Cesar Borgia is launching an attack on Camarino. He demands passage for his troops and a levy of a thousand men from my city. And this was friendship. My master asks that you keep your period of deliberation to a minimum. I await your answer. I, I'll have to think on this. My Lord Verano. The Lord Orsini no longer has a welcome here. Come, my husband. Thank you, my dear. 
<laughs> the bride and groom, spring in the lap of winter, and you failed to win her. Yes, it appears I've failed all around. The vacation is over, I, Orsini. Now we'll see which is more effective. Pretty words or the drums of war. <laughs> Stands Orsini, the old man on the edge of death. Do we strike? Daily, daily, let me think. Would soon you'll have everything wealth, position, fame, uh, and even the woman if you want her. You've sweated for this how many years? All my life, it seems, but I can't kill that old man. Well, then give me your orders. No, no. Let him live and may Borgia go to the devil. Wait, you fool, I'll do it. You'll obey me. Well, come to your senses. There's no profit in fighting for lost causes. I'm not so sure, my friend. Well, then hear me, Orsini. I give you notice. I withdraw from your service and offer my knife to Shazar Borgia. You betrayed not only him, but me. I'll not forget that. Perhaps you'll not forget Chita Del Monte, either. Lucini, did I see you arguing with Messer Billy? No, my Lord Verano. If I argued, I think it was with myself. Have you decided yet on Borgia's demands? I have. No honorable man, no honorable city could give Borgia what he wants. And, my lord, you've chosen well. And if fight you must, I offer one more sword against Cesar Borgia. Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's a way to ease the pain, often within a few minutes. A way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people were first introduced to anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today, these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them, and anyone may enjoy their benefits. Next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means, try Anison. You'll like the convenience of Anison tablets, and you'll be delighted with Anison's incredibly fast action. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. Ask for Anison by name today at your druggist. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's All-Star Festival, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television and by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Prince of Foxes, starring Douglas Fairbanks with Joyce McKenzie, will continue in just a moment after a short pause for station identification. <laughs> This is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue with the third act of Prince of Foxes, starring Douglas Fairbanks as Orsini, with Joyce McKenzie as Camilla. In its determination to oppose the demands of Cesar Borgia, the mountain city of Chita del Monte prepares for war. And as the blacksmiths forge their weapons, 
The eyes of Andrea Orsini are everywhere. You there! Up on the wall! Help get that cannon into place! My people can fight, Orsini, but time, time! We'll make what time we can. A military lesson, my lord. You know Borgia's battle strategy? No, I... I don't matter. I know it as I know my hand. First, intelligence about the enemy. He'll have that from my erstwhile friend, Mario Bailey. Second, the battle order. Mounted troops, artillery, and then the infantry. But why wait for Borgia to attack? Why not go out and meet him? But we have only a few soldiers, Orsini. None of them trained. And still I ask, why wait like rats in a hole? No, my Lord Verano. We're wolves. Wolves who attack the bull. Wolves often perish in such an attack. Not wily wolves. They wait for a chance to rush in from the side, avoid the sharp horns, and then they strike. But always the weakest part. You know your profession well. I should. I learned it from a master. But now the apprentice rebels, and we attack. Well, your permission, my lord. And we attack Borgia's cavalry before it begins to climb your mountain. Respect for your years, the, the battle will be dangerous. These are my people, Orsini. When they ride out, I ride with them. Camilla, my dear. My lord husband, wear this scarf. I give it to you from my shoulders with my love and my prayers for your safety. Thank you. Goodbye, my dear. Orsini, I'll ride to the front. And for you, my lord Orsini... This handkerchief with my gratitude. Madonna, may Chute del Monte know victory before the sun has risen. They leave now. And suddenly the artist finds himself a soldier again. Well, my lady, it's all in a day's living. Let's hope it's not in a night's dying. Farewell, Madonna. Are the archers hidden? As only the wolf can hide them. Or the fox. <laughs> Once I was called a fox. A prince of foxes. Well, we'll see. It's a good night, my lord. Clear and sweet. I smell a bitterness in the air, Rosini. The smell of battle. Someday, perhaps, there'll be an end to this. Once Cesar Borgia is destroyed. Perhaps, my lord, we fight a battle in the last of wars. Once such words were spoken to me by my dearest friend. A soldier? Only in defense of his home. He was a saint in honor and justice. And he passed those virtues on to his only child. He's dead then? Yes. When he was killed, she needed refuge from the enemies of their family. I married her to assure her that refuge. I made her my daughter. So... You did not have to speak those words, my lord. I know, Orsini. But we face a battle, and who knows? Listen. Borgia's cavalry. Coming into the wood. Orsini, you command us now. Myself, my soldiers. I hope our own horses don't give us away. There. They're in the clearing. Close. Closer. Beautiful. Good fortune, my lord. Good fortune. Archers! On the day, sire. That news should heal your wounds. The wounds of an old man who sought to be a warrior. Please rest, my husband. Were all the wounded brought back to Chita del Monte? All are safe, my lord. And the battle continues? It continues well. Now you must rest. Soon you'll be strong again. No, my child. Orsini, 
Give me your hand. It shall always be here, my lord. And you, Camilla? You have it. There are men. There are battles. Always a hatred. A fighting in our hearts. I've grown very old. And always searched for peace. But even the scraps of wisdom that come with age <laughs> deny it to me. Perhaps you will find it. An end to this. A last battle. <laughs> Your kindness has brought me more peace than, than I'd ever known. Then, Camilla, I have done well. You have known peace once. May you know it again. And may you know love. Orsini? Yes, my lord. <laughs> you have both been true to me. I have understood. Now, be true to each other. <laughs> my husband. The last battle, Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Dawn yesterday, the city was besieged by the troops of Cesar Borgia. Orsini, you can't keep on like this. A soldier has his duties, Madonna, and among the most distasteful is writing the chronicle of the battle. How long has it been since you've closed your eyes? Since the battle turned against us? What has it been, two days, three days, a week? Once I said I could hold this city for an eternity. Now, for an hour, I scribble in a book. Cite del Monte, besieged by Cesar Borgia. And who shall read your book? No other soldiers, perhaps a jaded historian here and there, and perhaps Madonna, someday. All this shall be related as an adventure to amuse and frighten children. And how will you appear in this adventure? How? As a hero if we win, and certainly a villainous scoundrel if we lose. No, as a friend, and a true and honest nobleman. Nobleman, Camilla? <laughs> I wonder if history will ever discover the truth of that. Still they shoot their infernal cannon. Orsini, our food grows short. Then we'll eat less. Many of the men have fallen ill. The devil take them then. Let them shoot their arrows from their beds. Orsini, if if we fall... We won't fall. I'll hold this city till Borgia's men rot in their boots. Do you hear me, Madonna? I have failed in art and failed in politics, but as a soldier, I will not be beaten. <laughs> Three months. Three months of this. Command us, Orsini. What shall we do? Famine, pestilence, and the dead outnumber the living. One more assault and we're finished. Then let it be. Perhaps they'll show mercy. Mercy? My lady, only one thing remains. To take measures for your safety. What measures? There's a secret exit from the city. While Borgia's troops pillage, you'll escape into the open and then on to Rerugio, Venice, wherever you wish. And you'll escort me? Only in spirit, Madonna. Then I intend to stay here. These are my soldiers. And mine, too. Do you think so badly of me that I could crawl away while you and my people die? Heroism is a shallow thing, Madonna, if it's not rooted in wisdom. I don't intend to be wise. I intend only to stay here. Then for my sake, Camilla, escape while you can. For your sake? I said I'd failed at art and politics. I thought I could hold the city, and now I've failed at that, too. But if you are safe, then my life has been to some purpose. Orsini, my life must have a purpose, too. But you throw it away, you... you, uh, Camilla, the artillery. It stopped. Two Borgia men under a flag of truce at the city gates. What do they want? A parley. Take them to the council hall. Madonna, we'll meet them together. Hurry now, change into your prettiest dress. 
If haggling's their game, the road may be longer than we thought. You bring me a message from Cesar Borgia? We do. May I introduce the emissaries, my lady? I've caused to know them well. This conceited devil is Captain Don Esteban Ramirez. I bow to the traitor, Orsini. Thank you. And this other one, him you remember, Mario Bailey. He's risen in the world. <laughs> what would you expect of a Judas? I'm bound to prosper. Do you come to ask for peace? As commanding officer of the forces of Cesar Borgia... I'm authorized by His Excellence to make certain proposals which my master believes you may find to your advantage. Proceed. First, in return for the surrender of the city, my lord engages to restrain his soldiers from a sack and to take no vengeance on you or your people. What security does he offer? His illustrious word. Huh? What else does your master desire? The above term shall be considered null and void unless the traitor Orsini be delivered alive into the hands of the Duke Cesar's officers. Then I am to be the main prize of war. Ah, we look forward to your company once again, Magnifico. Return to your master. And your decision? Tell him I will set torches to the city rather than accept the conditions he offers. Mm. I shall convey your answer. We ask safe conduct back to our lines. You shall have it. Go. <laughs> And so, my lord Orsini, we dispose of these matters. Imagine. What food for the historians. But Andrea Orsini shall become the prize of war. We reject the terms. We'll renew the defense. It will be the last, Madonna. I'm not afraid of death. But much more to the point, I've made a sudden discovery. Neither am I. <laughs> Deliver that message into the hands of His Excellency Cesar Borgia as swiftly as possible. Your Lordship, Don Esteban. A prisoner has surrendered himself. Execute him. I've no time for... Oh, Andrea Orsini. So, you accept our terms. I ask to be taken to Borgia. By his orders, I sit in his seat. Well, sit lightly, my friend, lest you damage your brains. Again? Your tongue? Perhaps we'll rip it out of you. But his excellence will decide the manner of your punishment. What difference? For all intents and purposes, I'm already dead. Yes, I'd say that was quite correct. And yet, like so many dead ones, I can still influence the living. What? You presume to dictate terms? Only to warn you to stand by the terms already offered. And if we don't? You will conquer a dead city. Every building burned, every man, woman, and child a corpse. There'll be less glory than loot, and the horror of Chita del Monte will be the name Cesar Borgia, hated by all of history. We... We are men of honor. We stand by our terms. Then I am your prisoner. And, my fine friend of many words, some very amusing things are going to happen to you. <laughs> Excellency, the Lord Cid of Borgia, Duke of Valentinois, and Duke of Romagna. Madonna Camilla. Borgia comes to claim what is his. On the contrary, Madonna Camilla, I come from Rome not as a conqueror. Your troops have conquered. But, madam, I would create a bond of affection between us. What can I do to accomplish this? There is only one thing I would ask of you. You wouldn't grant it. Ask, Madonna. Ask and find out. Life and freedom for Orsini, my lord. <laughs> this is most touching. I ask only this of you. Uh, what you ask is not impossible. My lord. Such love as this is indeed rare, and I should respect it. Yes, I should do something about it. Can I dare to hope? Oh, yes, Your Excellence. I would certainly say that. You may hope. And I promise you'll be surprised. Oh, my lord. We'll discuss it at dinner tonight. Will that suit you? <laughs> at dinner. The Madonna is 
isn't eating. No, my lord Borgia. I... Nonsense. Bailey, see that Her Excellence is fed. Ah, some fruit, my lady. A fine plum. These grapes taken from your own garden? Nothing. Is it this Orsini that preys upon your mind? Well, then, I promised to consider his case, didn't I? Should we invite him to join us at table? I have no words to thank you. You'll find them. Bring in the Lord Orsini. I give you, Madonna, Andrea Orsini. Oh, merciful God, what have you done to him? A few tricks. See how Don Esteban's eyes glitter with the pride of his accomplishments? Tortured, beaten. And clothed in rags, Madonna, the clothing of his station. Orsini the peasant. I love and honor the Lord, Orsini. Lord? <laughs> Scum from a mountain hut who poorly played a game and poorly lost it. He was a lord only at my command, and now I return to him to what he was. The fraud stands before you. Bring the peasant closer. Mother of God. I ordered them to leave you your tongue, Orsini. Have you any jest for us now? Any words of wisdom? My lord, Borgia, let me thank you for this last of all the things you've taught me. <coughs> You've taught me that there is no victory in power, no honor in deceit, no future in living as you will live, hated and alone. Madonna Camilla, forgive me for the misfortune I have brought upon your house. Orsini, peasant. Noble, you are the Lord to whom I humbly offer my love for all eternity. Ah, this joke is finished. Now I speak your sentence, Orsini. Belly, see that the lady keeps her chair. Ah, I will, my... Belly, you were his friend. Friend? Mario Bailey? <laughs> Messer Bailey stands alone against the world, an alchemist ever ready to transform his friends into gold. <laughs> You're a humble man of business, my lord. Uh, then listen, my friend, and see if you approve. Andrea Orsini, my sentence is that you shall be exposed in a cage on the castle tower, there to remain as a spectacle and warning until your bones drop apart. No, my lord, please. Take him from my side. Your excellence, I protest. You, Bailey, protest. What sentence is this for an ungrateful peasant who turned on your loving highness... A half-dead carcass to rot in a cage? No. Bailey, you think I've been too lenient? What would you suggest? Something blacker. Orsini, the painter, has been partial to colors. Let him enjoy them with empty sockets. I say, blind him. Blind him and set him on the road, and wherever the poor wretch wanders, let him be a warning of your lordship's justice. Oh, my lord, take my own life. Take what you wish, but... Madonna, you begin to work me. Guards, close them out. I'll be your servant. Oh. Don Esteban, do you fancy the new sentence? Most fitting, your excellence. <laughs> then it shall be done tomorrow. You might I suggest, my lord, why not here and now? Huh? My own two thumbs. You? Gouging this thing, I promise you amusement. Look, like these two grapes, I hold them in my hand, then with my thumbs. <laughs> oh, this promises to be a show worth the watching. Guards, tie his hands. Madonna, I do hope you're not squeamish. This shall be a sight to ponder in the dungeon, and you will. Bailey! You may proceed. I will, my lord. Camilla, one look. Take a good look at me, Orsini. It's the last thing you'll see. My thumbs. Scream, Orsini. Act the part, you understand? Scream. And now, my lords, his eyes. Now, the two grapes masquerade as your eyes. 
My lords, I show you the eyes of the peasant Arsini. <laughs> so be it, so be it. And now set the carrion upon the road to see the glory of his folly. <laughs> Esteban, I leave Cheetah Del Monte in your hands. May my lord have a pleasant journey. There can be no pleasantries for those who don't yet have what they want. And you, Captain Bailey, I'll send for you when I have need of your excellent talents. I await your word. One point more, Don Esteban. I gave orders that the Lady Camilla should be here to wish me farewell. Why isn't she by your side? My lord, she... She refused. Then the coddling is over. Consign her excellence to her own dungeon. I was about to suggest the same. Well, then I leave you now. Bailey, I shall continue to depend on you. Your magnificence has no more faithful servant than I. <laughs> then my future is assured, depending on which one of us is hanged first. <laughs> And here is the Magnifico Orsini once again in the peasant's hut. Bailey, my friend. Now, let me see you. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. The wounds have almost healed. I've waited for you to come. <laughs> the <laughs> finest traitor of them all. <laughs> you know, this whole thing pleases me. Who betrayed who? And where did it start? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> oh, no matter. My stomach has turned traitor to the rest of me. I, <laughs> I've discovered the devil doesn't always pay the best. Bailey. Hmm? Uh, Madonna Camilla, is she well? Ah. Today, says our Borgia, rode back to Rome. His final words were to have her imprisoned. But she's not harmed? No. Who commands the castle? Don Esteban. Don Esteban, of course. Oh, oh. Bailey, would you strike one more blow against the Borgia terror? With all my heart. One spark, one small spark could spread into a fire that would burn down his house. If we had money to hire mercenaries. We don't need them. While I've grown strong in this hut, the leaders of the people have come to me. The old soldiers. Ah, they are not tired of war? Not so long as they yearn for peace. I've made a plan, Bailey. Oh, oh, oh the fox again. The fox. <laughs> now, you say Camilla is in the dungeon. Bailey, Sapo, Fabio, all of you. Listen to me. We listen. This is the secret exit to the castle by which I once hoped Madonna Camilla would make her escape. It serves us now. I go alone to the dungeon. You follow and spread out through the city. When the moon is opposite the tower, then will be the time to strike. Questions? We know our parts. Then may fortune go with us this night. <laughs> To the guard. Who's there? Oh. Now, now, your keys, friend guard. You are punctual, Don Esteban. Camilla. Orsini. Oh, my darling. Your eyes. Well enough to find your beauty in these shadows. You weren't lying. A trick for Borgia's amusement. Tonight, your people retake the city. I'll give the signal when you're safe. Then let's leave quickly. Every night Don Esteban comes here, he, he comes to... I have no words to express his evil. Guard! Guard! Don Esteban. Into the shadows. Here, Your Excellency. Why aren't you at your post? Why? Orsini. Blind Orsini. What scheme is this? One of your own making. No matter. Your blindness will soon be over, Orsini. But look, Don Esteban. Can these be eyes you see? I... Eyes. And this time, my friend, I cast aside my words and take my sword. This time you'll die, artist. What? Without an assassin to do your dirty work? Uh, I take it as my pleasure. Orsini! Don't fear, my lady. A touch of blood to make the fox more wily. Don Esteban! Uh, look to your sword. I give you a message to take your master. Yeah, words again? No, steel. This, this for Borgia. Oh. 
was your words. Parsini, the guards. Stand back, Camilla. It's a long night's kill. My lady, where are you here? Bailey. My lady, go Hey, what's this? His lordship, Don Esteban Ramirez. Ha! He'll have good company, Orsini. The city's taken? Ah, the fox planned well. I'll open the other cells, Madonna. Camilla. Then, then we are free, Orsini. Not as long as Borgia rules, but we might contrive to put a stop to that. Orsini. Ah, I marvel at the light that burns in my lady's eyes. For what? A soldier who dabbles in art. An artist who dabbles in war. A poor peasant. My lord Orsini. My lady Camilla. our screen director's playhouse presentation of Prince of Foxes and two fascinating performances by Douglas Fairbanks and Joyce McKenzie. Next Thursday, the screen director's playhouse brings you a portrait in scarlet as we present the powerful motion picture story, Ivy, directed by the late Sam Wood. And recreating her memorable starring role will be Joan Fontaine. Now, here again is tonight's star, Douglas Fairbanks. My lords and ladies, the audience, Her Excellency, my lady Joyce Mackenzie, this peasant Orsini were a poor fellow indeed. Did he strut across our drama without a deep and grateful bow to the director? So may we dispense with Orsini and introduce you to the master artist who created Prince of Foxes and such other truly magnificent motion pictures as Twelve O'Clock High and Song of Bernadette, the director, Henry King. Thank you, Doug, and you, Joyce, for helping a director solve a problem. We are constantly being frustrated by this matter of becoming terrifically involved in a picture story, and at the same time not being able to relax and see it as pure entertainment. But tonight I finally made it, as I heard Prince of Foxes for the first time in a different medium, without having the worry of production sets, pacing, and camera angles, I leaned back and thoroughly enjoyed myself. Thanks for a fine adaptation, and good night. Tonight's production, Prince of Foxes, was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, whose Technicolor production, Halls of Montezuma, is having its world premiere simultaneously in Hollywood and New York tonight, starring Richard Whitmark. Douglas Fairbanks may soon be seen in a Columbia release, The Great Manhunt. Joyce McKenzie was heard through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of The Mudlark, starring Irene Dunn. Henry King's next picture, soon to be released, is I'd Climb the Highest Mountain, starring Susan Hayward and Bill Lundigan. Tonight's cast included Bill Conrad, Raymond Burr, Lynn Allen, Lou Merrill, Herbert Butterfield, and Ben Wright. The Prince of Foxes, from the novel by Samuel Schellebarger, was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons. The Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Carn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen next Thursday when we present Joan Fontaine in Ivy. <laughs> Listen again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening to the one and only Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night feature of the all-star festival. Join Archie and the gang at Duffy's Tavern tomorrow night on NBC.